Hi everyone, welcome to this Skynet workshop as part of the Hack the System Hackathon. Today we're going to be getting a talk from Daniel from Skynet and talking us through uh, an overview of Skynet, talking a bit more about their challenges and then how to actually uh, deploy with Skynet and, and build something cool. So in general for the Hackathon we have a couple of events uh, coming up this week and next. So following this, this workshop is going to be the Vega workshop in about an hour. So uh, we'll stay on the same Zoom call and you can uh, we'll roll into the, the Vega team then. And we also have next week, we have an Ask Me Anything session with Arthur Brightman of the, the founder of Tezos. So that should be a great session. Feel free to come along. Uh, you can kind of uh, soundboard your, your hackathon projects with him and definitely a, a decent soundboard for a hackathon project. And then uh, on Thursday next week, we have a, so the second of the Fluence workshops as well. Um, but yeah, so the session is going to be recorded. It will be uploaded onto the Encode Club YouTube. Um, I'll send a link to our Discord in the chat now in case you're not already in there and also to the YouTube in a second. But I think without further ado, I'll hand over to Daniel, who's the uh, developer evangelist at Scanner. All right. Thank you so much, George. Um, yeah. So. Uh, I'm sure you're aware, but this is the ENCODE workshop for Skynet. And so I'm going to be talking about using Skynet for decentralized applications um, in the world of today, right? We still kind of are in a Web 2 world moving to Web 3. Um, and so we make technology that uh, can work for both of those things. So background, I'm Daniel Helm. I'm the developer evangelist for Skynet Labs. We're the team that's um, primarily responsible for Skynet. And um, I'm going to get into what Skynet is, why you'll want to use it and everything else. But if you want to follow along in the workshop, I'm just going to throw up some like prerequisites that you can maybe get going in the background while I do that. Um, you'll need Git uh, to clone a repo. You'll want Node.js installed. You'll want Yarn installed. And you'll want to clone uh, our workshop repo. If you want the commands for doing all of that stuff, I have a, a link here that I'll drop in the chat. And it's a, it's a little bit of a website that can, you can use to follow along if you, if you don't want to use um, maybe the, the, the Git repository. OK, so prerequisites out of the way. What is Skynet? Why would you want to use it? Well, Skynet brings us decentralized storage now. Um, there's other projects along that uh, talk about these things. We think we're doing it really well in a way that is super accessible to users. On the traditional web, you know, you have your data uh, centrally managed usually. It's up on AWS, it's up on Google Cloud, somewhere else. Uh, and applications really follow this model where they try to silo that data. Um, you use Facebook and Facebook's got your data. No one else has access to your data. And so you have to have this kind of blind trust about what Facebook's going to do with that data. Um, and uh, you also just have this idea that, you know, they've got to make some money. and so. Um, that kind of also gives them some incentive to potentially sell the data or uh, use you as, as the product being sold. And you know, a lot of us in the blockchain and crypto space are looking forward to a decentralized version of the web, right? We look forward to distributed storage and applications um, that allow for you know, censorship resistance, uh, data ownership that happens you know, by the user. So we can take that use data from application to application. And this also lets us have uh, more interesting incentivization and um, monetization models. And so we can create this kind of flexible market. So Skynet brings us that, OK? Um, what Skynet is going to give us as a storage layer is we're going to have knowledge that our infrastructure is trustless for our storage layer. Um, and it, it's going to be able to do that for both Web 2 and Web 3 developers. And so for Web 3, that looks like decentralized off-chain storage that you can um, rely on. You can upload a giant video, and you don't have to keep all that data on chain. You just kind of keep the hash of it on chain. Uh, for you know Web 2 and Web 3 developers, this looks like really low barrier to entry access. Um, so you know your users don't have to have some specialized wallet or sync a node or anything like that. Um, they just access your website through their normal web browser, and the decentralized part works in the background for them. Um, Skynet also brings reliable data interoperability between applications um, so that you know, your users are staying in control of their data, but they can also feel free to take that data. Um, say they have a friend list on one app and they want to import that into another app, they're free to do that. Um, and so we're able to do this with an infrastructure that's really rooted in, in privacy and security. 
So Skynet is, is what I'm going to be pitching here today and teaching us a little bit more about. And the best way to uh, really get started understanding Skynet is to understand SIA, which is the blockchain network that Skynet is built on top of. So SIA was launched in 2015. Uh, it is decentralized storage that uses this model of renters and hosts. You can view this kind of like Airbnb. Someone has uh, extra storage on their hard drives and they say, hey, does anyone want to rent out this, you know, couple of terabytes I've got? And SIA works in a, a trustless fashion to connect renters and hosts um, and, and create file contracts for them. And so the payment occurs in SIA coins and, and the project is really fast, really secure and super affordable. Um, there's lots of really interesting technology behind SIA that I'm not going to be able to get into. Um, but one of the maybe, you know, shortcomings for some use cases is that it's really built for personal storage. It's not really intended for sharing. I can't say I've put this file on SIA, now I want to send it to a friend. I've put my web app on SIA, now I want to send a link to a friend. You can't do that um, because it requires a fully synced node and in owning SIA coins. And so what Skynet does is it interacts with the SIA network by using portals and portals kind of act on behalf of users to talk back and forth with the SIA network. So you've got all this kind of decentralized storage over here and uh, a user, whether using a, a website or some software on their local machine can then access all of that content. Uh, like I said, without all the overhead um, traditionally involved. So we think that this is a model for a better internet for, for a variety of reasons. Um, and just to see kind of some of the things that are already possible on Skynet, we've had community developers make Skynet Send, um, which is uh, an alternative to Firefox Send, RIP. We've got decentralized identity that works cross application across the whole ecosystem. So you can have one login for any Skynet application. Um, and we've had even a developer build a, a, an entirety of a social media platform that is fully decentralized and accessible on any Skynet portal. If you're interested uh, in more apps that have already been made, check out the Skynet App Store. This is a, a community initiative to kind of uh, make a repo of Skynet applications and it's a Skynet application itself. All right, I think that's enough with the intros trying to sell you on Skynet. Let's go ahead and get started building a little bit. Um, I think before we even start building, I just wanna show how easy it is to get data on Skynet. The easiest way is to go to sciasky.net. Sorry, I brought that down. And there's a file uploader. I can go to browse. I can select uh, this wonderful photo of me. It will upload it and I instantaneously get a link back. Okay, and so that link looks a little bit like this. It is, we call these sky links and that has this SIA colon slash slash in the front. And the reason they're formatted this way is because this link isn't attached to our portal, someone else's portal. It can be accessible anywhere that you have access to Skynet. So any of the portals will be able to access this content instantaneously. So for this link here, that might be uh, these, this list of portals. These are community run, some of them go up, some of them go down, um, but I think you can get the sense of it a little bit there. All right, so let's get into the code and see how we would upload a file like this uh, using one of our SDKs. So let me go ahead and get reconfigured here a little bit. So we're going to be working today off of this um, GitHub repo called Skynet Workshop. It's on our Nebulous Labs account. But uh, like I said, there's this link to where at encode-skynet.hns.sciasky.net. Uh, I dropped the link in the chat. And this is going to um, have a, a lot of the code samples that you can copy paste, but I'm more importantly going to be using these interactive components in the talk to show how you can just kind of really easily and simply interact with Skynet right in your browser. Um, and, and just so I don't forget, I also really wanted to mention the challenges that are specific to the ENCODE hackathon. So sorry for this little segue, that's a little awkward. Um, but I want you to keep these in mind as we're kind of running over these code samples um, because I think they're really attainable. So for our easy challenge, what we have is just the requirement to 
Um, we say host your app on Skynet, and that doesn't mean the entirety of your app. It just means use something in your project and, and do it on Skynet. So this can be storing your front end application or some user data, um, whatever, touch Skynet in, in your project, uh, submit it to us, and you'll be part of the 100,000 SciaCoin pool that'll get distributed among all the folks that kind of meet that minimum threshold. If you get excited about Skynet and want to go a little bit deeper, we have a medium challenge here, which we call contribute to the SCAP ecosystem. Um, and so SCAPs are Skynet applications. Uh, and so what we're looking for here is something that really starts using more of the features of Skynet. Uh, it gets hosted on Skynet. Um, you can use the decentralized login system we have. Um, we integrate handshake names, which I'll hopefully have time at the end to talk about a little bit, um, that give you really human readable URLs like encode skynet.hns.sciasky.net. Um, and, and we will be talking about SkyDB and mutable data too. So if you incorporate sort of this, the, the more full ecosystem stuff of Skynet in your app, you'll be eligible to, you know, uh, the winner will get 200,000 SIA coins and then there'll be two runner ups that have 75,000 SIA coins. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Like I mentioned before, you'll need Node.js to follow along, um, and we'll be using Yarn as our package manager for JavaScript, so that'll be need to be installed as well. Um, so once you have cloned the repo, the first thing that you're going to want to do is run Yarn install to install all the necessary uh, packages to get going on the project. I've already installed mine. I cheated a little bit. But once we've done that, we can run yarn start. And what we're building today is a web app. And so this is using kind of a create React app framework. If you don't know about React, don't worry about it. We're just going to be using that to kind of structure our code. But when you run yarn start, it will open up localhost 3000 in your web browser. It'll take a little while to build. And what we'll see is our kind of starting template that we've built out for our web application. I don't know if this is longer than normal or the fact that, um, you know, what, 79 people are watching me, but okay, here we go. So what we have is a very simple structure for our web app. We're gonna do this in three parts and we just kind of have a form. And the code that we're gonna walk through is taking this uh, the form UI elements and really hooking it up to Skynet logic. And so just to give us an overview, we're going to upload a file in part one. We're going to upload a folder of files in part two and see how we use that for deploying web applications. And then we're going to get into mutable data uh, in part three. Okay, I think that's enough with the kind of prereqs here. I'm going to go ahead and CD into the workshop project here and open up my code editor and we can start looking at some code. Um, that's gonna not work, let's see. All right, someone feel free to interrupt me if I'm, I'm not, if you're not able to see my code base here. Okay. So we've got our development server running in the background from yarn install. So the first thing we're going to do is go over the code to upload a file. If you're familiar with React, um, what happens is, uh, at least with create React app, we have an index.js that will load components inside of it. And so all the, all the logic that we're going to be messing with today is going to be in this app.js file. And we've got markers here that kind of show where the code is going to go. Um, and the rest are things that are kind of there to hook everything together. So the first thing that we're going to want to do to start using Skynet in a JavaScript application is install the SDK. And so what I can do to do that is call yarn add Skynet.js. Skynet.js is the name of our JavaScript SDK. And while that's installing, I'm going to go ahead and take the second code block and add it into our app.js file at step 1.2. And you can see I'm adding this here uh, at the top. 
right with my import statements. And so what we're actually doing is importing a Skynet client from our Skynet JS library. And then we're passing it a portal name to initialize a new client. Okay. And so um, you can see here under portal, we've said SciaSky.net. This is kind of just helpful for development purposes. We're going to come back to deployment. We're actually going to get rid of this because we want it to work on any portal, not just SciaSky.net. But when we have our client, what we are able to do then is, is really interact with Skynet through that client object. Um, and so we're able to use that for uploading, downloading, and everything else, as we'll see. Um, so it seems like my uh, Skynet JS dependency has been installed. Let's kind of do this to clean it up a little bit here. And we'll go on to step three here. So we've already imported. We have uh, imported the library and we have our client initialized. And so now if we look back at our form, this is our little web app. What happens is we're going to upload a select a file and then click send to Skynet. When we click this button, we have that wired up to call our handle submit function. And that's where like 90% of the logic that we'll be messing with is going to live inside of here. So just so you know, what we're doing is we're setting up the logic that's going to happen when we click that send to Skynet button. And so I'm going to put that right here. And we created the client before, and our form is going to pass in a file from our input field. And all we need to do to send this file to Skynet is called client.uploadfile file. We'll get back an object and we'll pull out the Skylink field from it. And at that point, we have our Skylink. And we saw that before. It said like SIA colon slash slash with all that stuff. And um, that's not usually the most usable thing in the browser. And so we can get a URL specific to the portal that we're using by calling client.getSkylinkURL, pass in the Skylink, and then we have a URL that can open in any browser. Uh, I've peppered in a lot of console logs throughout this as well, just so you know. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and uncomment that for part number four, save this and take a look. This last piece of code, you'll see us doing this a lot in this tutorial. We kind of have set whatever. This is um, React specific. It has to do with setting the state of the application. And so we're just saying we want Skylink URL to be saved to this kind of file Skylink position. But let's take a look at our workshop. I'll go ahead and uh, refresh it here and see if it works. I can select an image, send to Skynet. And then I have a view file on Skynet button now. If I click on it, that is our Skylink. OK. Whether or not you find that exciting, um, I want to show a little bit more about uh, what we just did there. So again, on this encode skynet.hns.sciasky.net page, um, I've got little widgets uh, to kind of like interact a little bit more deeply that, so we don't have to mess with our code. Um, but I just want to show that here I have an image, an, an uploader as well. And we can copy that Skylink to this clipboard. And uh, as a reminder, if I paste that there, we're going to instantaneously be able to access that Skylink up on all these different portals um, all across the globe. Um, it seems like I'm trying to ping some that are down, so it's going to spin for a little while. But you can try this out yourself and um, see what different portals you can access this through. And so, um, you know, we run SciaSky.net, but we don't run SkyPortal.xyz, and so we can still get it there. OK, so that is part one. We've got our image on Skynet. Um, wonderful. One last thing here, if you're unfamiliar with uh, working in the browser, doing uh, kind of web development stuff, you can press F12. My console is going to be way smaller than um, probably viewable. But we're doing console logs that will show up here, too. So I'll leave this open. Um, and you can see that it called uploading file and then links to our file uploaded down here as well. And it's just helpful for kind of seeing the process another way. Okay, 
So that's part one. We've seen how to upload a file. The next thing we're going to do is look at uploading a web page. And so the web page that we're going to upload is actually a certificate that's going to say, aren't you great? You made it through this workshop. And uploading directories works a lot like uploading files. You just kind of have to build them out first. And we're going to see how that works here. And so what I could do, still on our handle submit uh, logic under step 2.1, I'm going to paste this chunk of code and uncomment out the console log. And then we'll look through this. So you can see we start off by um, passing name, which is part of our form from our workshop here. And the Skylink URL from the image that we uploaded to uh, a web, a generate web page function. And this is in our utilities. I'll show you just real briefly so you can see a little bit what it looks like. But the idea of this generate web page function is um, it'll do a little bit of logic, but mostly it just returns a really long string that is the HTML content of, of the certificate that we're going to be seeing. So there's nothing really too fancy going on here. It's just kind of some HTML markup. But once we've generated that string, we can create a directory object. It's just a normal uh, JavaScript object. We can give that file a name, index.html. And when we call client.uploadDirectory uh, with the object and a name for the entirety of the object, we will get back a Skylink, just like when we uploaded a file. So, um, Again, we'll need to turn that into a URL that's usable in our portal. And we'll set our application state. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to refresh just to make sure everything's looking good. I will write Daniel Helm. I will select a photo of myself and send to Skynet. And we can see again that we've uploaded the file, but this time we've also uploaded a web page. And so let's click that. And in our browser, we have our index.html file. And so this is like the most simple way of deploying a static website, right? Um, if you have a folder with an index.html file, it's going to load when you go to the URL. Um, and so this is great, especially in this kind of Jamstack world of static website generators. If you're familiar with like Gatsby or some of these other projects, um, you can really deploy entirety of, uh, of really rich uh, websites on the Skynet fairly easily. Um, I'm going to hop back over to our little uh, widget station over here. And we're going to just kind of like take our URL from this web page here and paste it in to take a look at the kind of file structure of this Skylink. And so just like we built in our code, we have a folder file name of certificate. This shows us the size. And then we have a list of every single subfile. We only put one in there, but you get the idea. OK. So one other kind of uh, key little detail about deploying websites on Skynet is that if you're a web developer, you know this is a little bit unsafe. You don't want your URL at the end of someone else's domain because then that domain would have access to the cookies you set or your browser storage that you save. Um, and so I've provided another widget in here to just show um, that we can also put in our Skylink and have a version that is a subdomain of the portal. And this works on any of the portals. But this is nice because um, this is the exact same website. But now we know that um, the data that we set is going to be secure from any other application that's deployed on Skynet. We don't have to worry about um, them you know, looking at cookies or private seeds or anything else that we save. Um, so if you're getting into it, this can be a, a pretty useful uh, little widget for you. OK. Check questions here from the chat. Nothing else. OK. 
let's come back to this. Just so the one, next, sorry, Daniel, I'm oh. asking for the documentation link for SkyDB. So SkyDB is still attached in our uh, documentation for Skynet.js as a whole. Um, so I will see if I remember the URL off the top of my head. If that link does not work, um, I'll get it to you. And there, there should be a link to the Skynet.js link. Sorry, uh, in the <laughs> in this little workshop I've made here, at the very bottom, I put some resource links. So you have your the SDK documentation, some developer resources, uh, and the link to our Discord. So, thank you. Oh, and Jake has a question about uh, what about censorship? What if someone puts copyrighted material up? That's a great question. Um, so. If someone puts up copyrighted material, it will still get sent out and stored on SIA. Um, what can happen though is, for example, SIAsky.net, we get take DMCA takedown requests and we are a US business entity. And so we have a thing called a block list and every portal has a block list. Um, and so what that means is that if you try to access that content at SIAsky.net, we will no longer serve you that content. And also if you try to use our portal to upload that file again, um, we will kind of say, no, you can't upload that file here. Um, so I think some people see that and immediately say like, oh, well then it's not censorship resistant at all. Um, and I think the idea is that um, it is an open source software. Other folks might have different policies or different legal restrictions placed on them and different jurisdictions. Um, but as far as SciaSky.net is concerned, um, if we get a takedown request, we will um, block that content. Can you show in VS Code where is the source code for the HTML certificate page? I can indeed. Um, I appreciate the handshake question. I will get to that a little bit. Um, well, let me make sure I'm understanding it. But in the meantime, um, in VS Code, the generate web page is in this helpers folder, and the function is generate web page. Um, and so uh, this is where you'll find that. And so we have actually a Skylink for some of the CSS and SVG files. Um, there's a, a, a preview that we're going to be importing Skynet.js into that later on, um, but this is, is all that code right there. Um, that question uh, is going to be a little bit straying. Um, if we have time at the end, I'd love to get into it, um, but for now I want to make sure we have enough time to show um, SkyDB and HNS to everyone. Okay, so kind of pulling it back in here. We've looked at uploading immutable data, right? So we've looked at uploading files and folders, but once those files or folders are uploaded, we can't edit them. If we edit them, that would change the URL. Um, we'd have to send our friends a new thing to our website. Uh, and it, it's, a, it's a feature. We, don't, we want that data to be secure and verifiable, and we know that that data is that data. And that's why we have those kind of skylinks. But sometimes we want mutable data, and, and Skynet creates a space for that using SkyDB. Um, and it's a really powerful tool set that we're going to get into. Um, but with mutable data, you have new issues, right? So one is format expectations. For Skylinks, that can link to any file. It could be a video, it could be a PowerPoint, it could be a zip, um, whatever. But with SkyDB, we're, we, we use JSON to do this. Um, and it's a way of really guaranteeing that we have certain kind of um, interoperability, interoperability between apps so that we can take this information from application to application. We also run into the issue of read versus write permissions, right? With a Skylink, you know, once it's written, um, you don't need write permissions anymore uh, and anyone can read it. Uh, but with SkyDB, we have to kind of say, well, we want someone to be able to update it um, and, you know, everyone else to be able to read it without updating it. 
And so we use seed phrases as a solution. This is probably familiar to uh, this audience, given that it's a lot of crypto folks. But we use seed phrases to derive a public and private key. And we use the um, private key to be able to have write permissions on SkyDB and the public key to be able to have read permissions. And both of those get paired with a data key to be able to know kind of what bucket um, this, this JSON is sitting in. Um, if you're looking at the name and start, start thinking like, well, how do I do queries on SkyDB? Um, to, to be clear, this is a key value store type of database. Um, this isn't kind of like an SQL style database. Um, and, and we'll get to see it in action uh, a little bit. So let's make our app dynamic. Okay, so as a preview here, let's see what the form for SkyDB is going to look like. We're going to enter in a seed. We're going to enter in a data key. Then we're going to be able to select a color and then the rest of the normal stuff in our certificate. And actually what we're going to be trying to do is in our certificate, you notice if I hover over myself down here, I get this nice green uh, fade out thing here. Um, we're going to set the color of that. And what we want to do is make it so that we can keep this same URL and I can come back later, change the color and save it. And if someone refreshes their page, this color will change. So that's a little bit where we're heading um, with this code. So let's clean up my space here a little bit. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is jump back to the top of our app.js file and import another um, requirement. And so we could add it here, but we are separating our code nice and clean with steps here. And so I'm importing a function to be able to generate that public private key pair from a seed. And so that's uh, just a function that we have in our Skynet.js library. The next thing we're going to want to do is make the functionality for saving that user entry form into SkyDB. And so again, this is going to go in our handle submit function that happens when the, the button is pressed. And so I'm going to come down to 3.2, paste that in there. And this is a bigger code block than the other one. So I'm going to take a second to kind of uh, try to walk through it a little bit more slowly. So we have our seed um, that is provided uh, through the form. And we're going to generate that key pair uh, for the public key and a private key. And we'll save that to these two variables. Um, then what we want to do is create a JSON object that we're going to save to SkyDB, right? We want to send up kind of an object. And so here, um, just so we can uh, save it for later, we're going to save the name our Skylink URL, uh, our directory Skylink URL, which is our, our web page, and the, the color that has been selected by the user. So we've created this object. And then we'll try to call uh, set JSON on uh, using our client. And so the syntax here is client.db, set JSON. And remember, to do our write, we're going to need to provide a private key. We need a data key to kind of say, where are we going to store this? Uh, and our, our JSON data that we declared above. Once that's finished, uh, we're going to console log at, out the information. Um, and that will then just be living on SkyDB for anyone else to kind of consume uh, later on. We're going to actually go ahead and do a few more things so that this app can consume it. So one of the things we want to do is come up to Step two, one. And remember earlier, we used this function to generate our web page HTML of our certificate. And what we're going to do now is actually add in our seed and data key. And so um, our web page is now going to know the public key and the data key of our SkyDB JSON. And so now it can look it up, even though the file itself is immutable and will never change it will have the code built into it to go look up that data and refresh itself. And so this is kind of like a trivial example, but really the crux of why SkyDB is so powerful it can create instantaneously these like really uh, rich websites 
that still have uh, all the security of the decentralized storage. The last thing that we're going to want to do is um, come down and we've created a load data button on the our form too. Let me show that to you before I put in the code. And so there's a load data button. Um, and what that'll do is if we type in our seed and data key and click load, it will auto load our, our last color and last name and our last image. And so we wanna kind of get that functionality wired up too. And so in this block, we'll put that here. And so again, what we want to do is generate a key pair from a seed. And this time we're just reading the data, right? So we don't need the public key, or sorry, we don't need the private key. We only need a public key. And so we're going to pull the public key. We're going to call on our client object, get JSON. We're going to pass the public key along with the data key. And that will get us back a data object. And that data object will have different fields on it, right? It's the same fields that we set before. So we have name, Skylink URL, directory Skylink URL, and color. And we'll call these set functions to uh, set our application state in React. OK, so kind of a mouthful, but let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. I want to make sure I commented, uncommented one other thing. OK, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh this page, go to SkyDB, and let's do a really secure seed, because remember, if anyone knows this seed, they're going to be able to access our data. Um, if you're following along, you can probably ruin my demo by using the same seed as me. And then bucket for data. Then we can select a color. Let's say that one right there. Picture of me. And now when I send to Skynet, we'll see that we again are going through the steps of uploading the file, uploading the web page, and then saving our user data to SkyDB. Um, and you'll notice that we got a little bit of a console log error there. Um, that ignore that. Basically, it's trying to say, like, does this SkyDB entry already exists under really secure seed bucket for data. And we say, no, it doesn't. So we can just start a new one. But we see that our SkyDB entry is written. So let's go ahead and view our page on Skynet. And now we have our certificate. And when I hover over myself, I get now a red butt background. OK. So like I said before, we can also come back up here and change our color. So let's change this to a blue now. And I will click Send to Skynet. Um, and because of the way we wired our app, it re-uploads all those things. But you'll see, because the image didn't change, the Skylink didn't change. And because our web page didn't change, the URL didn't change. But we have updated our SkyDB entry. And so I can come to my certificate. And before, I had this red. And uh, you know, whoever I give this URL to, and now if they access the page, they see that they're loading the SkyDB entry, finding that color field, and changing the web page uh, depending on it. Um, so if you look under widgets, if you're kind of interested in some of this stuff, uh, like I said before, I had really secure seed, I believe. Um, and Probably should use something easier, bucket for data. And in our widgets over here, I, I've set up one that, to where we can always just kind of like click get JSON and see what's in a bucket for a given, um, you know, uh, a data key for any any seed. Um, and also, if I wanted to mess up my own web page, I could save a new set JSON here. So I could say, uh, oh no. And so now I don't have a color and I'll have, you know, messed up the functionality on my own web page. Sad. Okay. So that is getting SkyDB uh, all hooked up and reading and writing from it. 
The next step that I want to show in terms of developing on Skynet is what deployment looks like. Um, so when we deploy, we'll want to build this application and upload it to Skynet. And like I had mentioned before at the top of our app.js, when we initiate our, sorry, initialize our Skynet client, we do it with a portal um, for local development reasons. But if I remove that, now I can access that through any Skynet portal and it will communicate with the same Skynet portal that it's been loaded on. So it has no reliance on any other portal being active. So I can even comment that out too. Um, and so I'm going to comment that out and we can see what it looks like to then build this project. And what I'll end up doing when this gets built, it will be in a single kind of directory. That will be called build. And it will take a while to run. But what I can do is then upload that um, here and access the React app. Oh, I actually forgot one little trick for React. We have to tell React um, where it kind of like thinks its home page is. And so that is actually in our package settings. And so we can call that here. We just say home page is you know, the relative directory. Okay. Um, at this point, when that gets done, I will I will upload that and uh, we'll be able to load the web page itself. Um, but I think you know this is like the fundamental core working aspects of working with Skynet um, using JavaScript. And so I think there's oftentimes this kind of question like, where do I go from here? Um, Usually the first things that folks like to do is get a handshake name and uh, attach it to a URL um, like skyfeed.hns.sciasky.net um, because this is way more human readable than um, the long crazy ones. Um, also people like to integrate cross application identity and Sky ID uh, has great documentation for, for doing that. And then also the last thing is people don't like this deployment setup that I'm about to show you sometimes because it's very drag and drop and over and over again. Um, and so we have a lot of kind of automated deployment tools that people like to get into, um, including one that's just a GitHub action. So if you commit to your repo, GitHub will automatically, um, you know, upload the stuff to Skynet and also change the stuff on uh, Handshake to make sure that all your uh, URLs stay up to date. All right, it looks like we now have a build folder with all of our assets. And so I will go to sciasky.net. Um, down here it says, do you want to upload an entire directory? Yes. And I can drag and drop that directory. It will take a second to upload. And then now the application that we've been working on this entire workshop is available to be run directly off of Skynet. So I can um, do the same thing again. And we've deployed our application. Okay, I think I'm about hitting a time point where I should just stop and take questions. Um, if you're interested, again, check out the encode-skynet, hns.sciasky.net, long mouthful there. Um, but the last little tool on here is if you want to figure out more information about an HNS name, um, you can type that in 
and it will tell you um, some more information about where it points to. And um, the last little detail too is that the registry is, is another thing just like SkyDB um, where instead of saving a JSON file, you save a, a Skylink itself. And so that's how we create um, URLs that Handshake and other folks can integrate with. So if you're interested in looking into that, check out the documentation, um, grab a name on, on Namebase, and it's as easy as going to edit DNS and pasting in that SkyNS um, record right there under, under text. So. Awesome. Uh, if anyone has any any questions, please pop them into into chat. Um, I think we had that one earlier around the cookie problem, Daniel. Oh yeah. Um, okay. So, would the cookie problem you talked about remain? I add Skyline as text record in Handshake domain. Um, no, because I don't believe so. So what happens is once you have um, once you're at a subdomain of the HNS, anything else that is at any other kind of subdomain of that HNS uh, cannot access uh, your, your cookies or anything else. Um, the only website which could is, is the, the default portal website. Um, so I believe I might actually be incorrect about that. But the subdomains is, is actually how we do this kind of almost sandboxing of specific applications. So I hope that answers your question. Another note, it's not usually great to use cookies on Skynet applications because the whole idea is that everything's supposed to stay on the client side and cookies get sent to the server every single request. Um, and so we encourage folks to use browser storage too, but um, same difference. Great. Uh, Jake has a question asking, uh, so are all files and sites hosted on Skynet public? Um, yes and no. The data that is there is, is publicly accessible, right? Um, so I can always type in a Skylink and if it's on Skynet, it's everywhere on Skynet. Um, that being said, we could imagine making a, um, you know, an we could upload an encrypted blob onto Skynet that you might be able to access a bunch of encrypted data, but it's just kind of nonsense to you unless you know both the tools and the keys to unencrypt that data. Um, and so that's how actually um, I kind of showed briefly that skysend.hns. And so the way that it makes kind of uploading and sharing more secure is it breaks your files into chunks, encrypts each chunk, and then when you send the link, it gives you person the way to kind of decrypt those two. Awesome. Um, and ju just a question on, on my side, going back to what you said earlier around um, the question with copyrighted material or something that um, the Skynet, say if it was hosted on the Skynet server or it was uploaded through that, that would uh, be blocked if you'd received a DMCA. But you mentioned that if it was, say, someone else had uh, created a, a similar server that, and that you decided to host it there, that it might not be taken down. Was that correct? Um, that's correct. And to be clear, you know, SciaSky.net is not hosting this material. Mm -hmm. um, we are acting as a way to kind of like be a, essentially a gateway or a portal to get it on Sia. And so it's actually those files are distributed across, you know, computers across the globe. Um, and so even once that we get that information and put it out on those servers, um, we, you know, we can't go request that they all delete those things. It's a decentralized thing. We don't have that authority to do that. Um, but what we can do is we can say, oh, okay, um, well, no one can access this material through us anymore. And so we're putting a stop to it. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. So yeah, Jake asked, it will be viewable through other portals. Is that correct? I guess. That's correct. Um, Banu's asked, is there any documentation on how to integrate Sky ID in a website? There is. Um, if you go to, um, the page for sky ID on GitHub, um, there's pretty good documentation there. Um, 
the I would also say watch this space. Um, don't get too deep into developing something uh, using this workflow. We are actually holding an internal hackathon. Um, well, sorry, Monty, I don't know if it's released yet, but we have technology coming out that will allow anyone to be a identity provider, not just Sky ID. And so, um, you know, look into this. If it's part of your thing, build it out. Um, but also the tooling around this is going to get uh, really exciting in about uh, three weeks. So, awesome. That's I'm sure that's good to hear for anyone thinking of developing with with Skynet for the the hackathon. So, if there's any final questions, feel free to to pop them into the chat now. Um, otherwise, thank you very much, Daniel. That's been a, a fantastic workshop and a great balance, I think, between giving an overview of Skynet and the challenges, and also the uh, the actual coding side of it. I'm sure everyone everyone's enjoyed that as well. So, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and yeah, join our Discord. Uh, obviously, I'm also in the Encode uh, Discord. So please ask me some questions. And uh, I'm really excited to see what folks make. Me too, me too. So yeah, for everyone um, on the, the call still, there's going to be the Vega workshop after this. So we might already have some, some people from Vega in here wanting to, to see that. But um, yeah, thank you very much, Daniel, and also Manassi for, for organizing Skynet's involvement in the hackathon. I'm sure we'll get some, some fantastic projects built with, with it.